Hello, and welcome to the continuation of the Serve Safe Food Protection Manager Certification Training Course. My name is Mr. Dan Delcher, and I am a certified Serve Safe instructor with the Essex County Schools of Technology. This is Chapter 3 Contamination, Food Allergens, and Foodborne Illnesses. The objectives of Chapter 3 are identify the following physical and chemical contaminants and methods of prevention, points in the operation where food is at risk from deliberate contamination, the most common food allergens and their associated symptoms, and methods of preventing allergic reactions. So previously in Chapter 2, you watched the Chapter 2 contaminant video which dis, uh, from the National Restaurant Association, which discussed not only back biological contaminants, but also discussed physical contaminants and chemical contaminants. Physical contaminants include, but are not limited to, common objects that get into food, including metal shavings from cans, wood, fingernails, staples, bandages, glass, jewelry, and dirt. Naturally occurring objects such as fruit pits and bones can also be sources of physical contaminants. Symptoms of a physical contaminant include bleeding and pain. Mild to fatal injuries are possible. Cuts, dental damage, and choking. Your main prevention of physical contaminants are purchasing food from approved reputable suppliers, closely inspect food received, and take steps to prevent physical contamination, including per, uh, practicing good personal hygiene. Some also, especially metal, you need to be careful when opening up cans. Chemical contaminants. These include cleaners, sanitizers, polishes, machine lubricants, and pesticides deodorizers, first aid products, and health and beauty products, such as hand lotions, hairsprays, etc., and certain types of kitchenware and equipment, items made from pewter, copper, zinc, and some types of painted pottery. This kitchenware and equipment is listed as a chemical contaminant because sometimes these items break down and releasing their, uh, the pewter, copper, zinc, and paint into the actual food. Symptoms of chemical contaminants include vary depending on the chemical consumed. Most illnesses occur within minutes and usually involve vomiting and diarrhea. It's important if you observe a con if someone is experiencing a chemical contamination, that you uh, examine the chemical safety data sheet um, that you should have on hand for any chemicals that you're using in your restaurant. If you do suspect a chemical contamination, you must call the emergency number for your area and call the poison control number. Your best method of preventing chemical contaminants include use chemicals approved for use in food service operations, purchase chemicals from approved reputable suppliers, store chemicals away from prep areas, food storage areas, and service areas, separate chemicals from food and food contact services by spacing and partitioning. Never store chemicals above food or food contact surfaces.
It's important that we ensure that chemicals are not stored in dry food storage areas and that they have a completely separate um, closet or storage area for chemicals. Use chemicals for their intended use and follow manufacturer's directions. Only handle food with equipment and utensils approved for food service use. Make sure the manufacturer's labels on original chemical containers are readable and follow the manufacturer's directions and local regulatory requirements when throwing out chemicals. One thing that some people have gotten in trouble for is using cleaning out old chemical containers and then reusing them to store food in. That's why uh, that one bullet of only handling food with equipment and utensils approved for food service use is indicated. Now, unfortunately, even in this day and age, there are still people that want to harm, may want to harm a business, may want to um, make people sick, and those are deliberate contamination of food incidents. People that might attempt to contaminate food include terrorists or activists, disgruntled current or former staff members, vendors, and competitors. It's important that when we're dealing with deliberate contamination of food situations, we want to keep in mind the FDA defense tool of ALERT. Now ALERT stands for Assure, Look, Employees, Reports, and Threat. Assure, make sure products received are from safe sources. L, look, monitor the security of products in the facility. E, employees, know who is in your facility. R, reports, keep information related to food defense accessible. And T, threat, develop a plan for responding to suspicious activity or a threat to the operation. Food allergens. A food allergen is a protein in a food or ingredient to which some people are sensitive. These proteins occur naturally. When enough of an allergen is eaten, an allergic reaction can occur. Allergy symptoms include nausea, wheezing or shortness of breath, hives or itchy rashes, smelling in various parts of the body, including the face, eyes, hands, or feet, vomiting or diarrhea, abdominal pain, and itchy throat. Allergic reactions. Can, symptoms can become serious quickly. A severe reaction called anaphylaxis can lead to death. There are eight allergens that are most commonly uh, associated with most individuals in the United States. These aller the most common allergens are milk, soy, eggs, wheat, fish, shellfish, peanuts, and tree nuts. Now, there's not to say that there are other, uh, there are people that are allergic to other things, but these are the eight most common things that people are allergic to. So as a, as a service individual, as someone working in a restaurant, it's important that we prevent allergic reactions. And we do this by describe menu items and preparation to guests. Identify any allergens in the item. Suggest menu items without the allergen. 
clearly identify the guest's order for kitchen and service staff and deliver food separately to prevent cross contact. Now as kitchen staff, we need to avoid cross contact. Do not cook different types of food in the same fryer oil and do not put food on surfaces that have touched allergens. So it's important that we not cook shellfish or fish in the same vet, uh, you know, the same fryer as chicken or cut um, peanuts or cut soy on the same cutting board as lettuce. This is what is known is, uh, as cross contact. When an allergen is prepared on the same cutting surface or cooked in the same, uh, cooked on the same cooking surface, as something that's going to be served to someone that um, has an allergy. It's also important that we check the labels of our food to see if there are any allergens. So it's important that we know before we use that item for somebody that has an allergen to make sure you know to make sure that they don't uh, that they're not going to intake one of these allergens and finally how do you avoid cross contact you need to check recipes and ingredient labels wash rinse and sanitize cookware utensils and equipment and make sure the allergen doesn't touch anything for customers with food allergies Wash your hands and change gloves before prepping food. Use separate fryers and cooking oils for guests with food allergies. Label food packaged on site for retail use. Again, it is very important that we ensure that we communicate well with our customers and, uh, and as back of the house, um, staff, we want to make sure that we are doing everything we can to avoid cross contact when we're alerted to uh, a customer with an allergen. Because you making sure that they don't that you don't co cross contact um, any foods can basically mean life or death of that customer. This has been chapter three. At this time, you'll now complete the chapter three Google form and submit. There's also an activity about allergens as well. Thank you.